So let's talk about recession. Recession is just a slowing down the economy, of the economy. It's, it's, it's a psychological event as much as anything else. What do I mean by that? Well, when the government comes out and says, oh, recession is coming, or people start freaking out that way, a lot of companies say, okay, we gotta, we gotta make our money here, so we better fire people that are non-essential. And you know the economy is slowing down, so we want to make sure we got cash flow. So they start firing people, and it becomes a a self fulfilling prophecy. Uh, so the good news is that recessions, on average, last approximately a year, one year. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. So uh, that's number one. So it's only a year. So you have to just deal with this uh, contraction of the economy. That's what a recession is. It's receding. The economy is shrinking a little bit. Because modern uh, economies, they always want growth. They want everything to grow, so there's more jobs, there's more production. So when there's a recession, people freak out a little bit. So, uh, but you can think of recession, it's kind of like the economy is shedding some of its uh, dead wood. It starts, it's a way of correcting itself. It's just, nature's like that as well, right? You know, your forest will grow, will grow, and then they'll burn down, and then all kinds of new growth happens after the burnout. So it's uh, just natural. It's not the end of the world. So again, typical recession will last approximately a year. So what I would suggest you do, sometimes a year and a half. So what I suggest you do is that you plan for uh, the worst case scenario. So that's a general rule in life. Plan for the worst contingency and hope for the best. Uh, well, aim for the middle actually. So plan for the worst, aim for the middle, assume the middle, but plan for the worst. Why do I operate on this principle? Well, first of all, it puts you in a very good position uh, psychologically, financially, well, in every aspect of life. When you plan for the worst and you're ready for the worst, if the worst happens, you're okay. If you don't plan for the worst, you plan for the average and the worst happens, you're in trouble. So you never wanna be in trouble. So you wanna plan for the worst and if the worst does not happen, hey, you're doing fantastic, right? So always, plan for the worst. So worst case scenario with a recession is that it's, it's uh, you know, a year and a half maybe. It's a shrinking economy. So plan for that. So number one thing to do is uh, if you have a job, if you're working, save cash and cut expenses. You want to start building up your emergency fund if you don't already have it. Now people have been following me, me for a while now. I put out videos years ago talking about the power, the power of FU money, that's FU, FU, you know, like, I don't need your business, I don't need your job, I got enough money to pay all my expenses for at least six months to a year. Now I, depending how I feel, depending on where you are, I've said one year minimum, two years is good. If you're a freelancer, you need more FU money because freelancing is typically more erratic. If you work at a solid job, less FU money, is uh, needed, maybe six months if you work at a job. But here's the thing, if you, uh, because we're into recession, and it's probably already started now, the recession. Now, governments will, will, will take all their readings of the economy and, and, and they'll tell you, okay, we're in a recession. Now, the recession's already started, I would imagine, and this is typical before the government announces it, because governments look at old statistics to tell you what's going on now. So it's kind of like if you're driving somewhere, looking in the rear view, rear view mirror to see what's happening ahead of you. It's kind of silly. But governments, they do things like they used to do in the 40s, even though there's, anyway, I won't get into that. When you're in a recessionary environment or a suspected recessionary environment as we are in now, even if you're working on a solid job, you should build up your emergency money to, I would say, a year, just in case. Um, I know people who are uh, very good developers, even outside of, recession, it took them almost a year to get a new job. You know, they got their new job and doing fantastic, but you know, so there could be some lag time. Recession just slows everything down in terms of being able to get new jobs and stuff. And stuff. So just assume that it's gonna be a bit more difficult now. So number one, save cash, right? Number one, save cash, it's very important. I would try to get as much as a year worth of cash in hand so you don't have to worry about paying bills for a year. Number two, Remember, again, recessions are temporary. It's not the end of the world. I've seen these several times. They, they, they dip down and then boom, you got a nice boom afterwards. So what do you do in the meantime? Well, 
uh, whether you're working for somebody or whether you're learning and you want to get into a game, you want to level up your skills. That's huge. You want to level up your skills. Make sure that your skills are uh, tip top. So I'm not just talking about tech skills. I'm talking about social skills, communication skills, and so on. So how do you level up your skills? How do you decide which skills you have to level up? Well, first of all, you should know your fundamentals really well. Second thing to do is look at the job market in your area or where you want to work and look at where the demand is. Start doing some research and digging and really call up some companies, do some searching on the web, or whatever. Spend some time so you really understand the job market and where the demand is and then you will have a map in terms of what you need to learn. So you're in part, in your part of the world, you may find that there's tons of Java jobs or in another part or, or where you are rather, you might find there's a lot of Python jobs, who knows? So you just gotta look into that. The next thing you should do is should level up your contacts. Start becoming social. I know, I know for a lot of people, a lot of nerds, they're like, oh, I don't wanna be social with people. I'm telling you, the difference between those who get fired and hired, a lot of times it's social, it's not uh, intellect, right? It's like, um, one of my mentors used to tell me, he ran a big company, $50 million company, he used to say, uh, you can teach most people technical skills, but you can't teach them personality, right? So what you want to do is you want to become the person in your group of contacts. First of all, you want to expand your group of contacts in the industry, but you want to be the person that you're the go-to person. You're the person that they rely upon. They're the person they like. So think about it, if you're working at a company, you're hiring and firing manager, and uh, you gotta let go of, um, they say, listen, we gotta let go of 10% of the workforce, as we've seen with uh, you know, Google and so on. So what are you gonna do? So who are you gonna fire? Are you gonna fire the person who is easy to get along with, the person that helps out, makes your life easier, people like, or are you gonna fire the guy who's kind of on his own, people don't really know, maybe a bit of a, a complainer once in a while. Hey, that guy is gonna go first, right? For sure. Expand your community of contacts or in industry. When you do this, you can join Twitter spaces, you can uh, get into Discord channels. Like I have a Discord channel link below. It's free, it's over three and a half thousand people, all these different levels of coders and aspiring coders. Get to know each other. I know people in my mentoring group who they got jobs by doing that. You know, they say, hey, you know what, we know this guy here, he's great, you know, he's, he's, he's contributed to some uh, open source projects, he's on our chats with us, we get along with him, he knows the stuff, we'll hire him, you know, and that, so then you got a stack of resumes of unknown people, but they, they, they're going to say, oh, this is my buddy here, take a look at a resume, he's great, he's great, oh yeah, he's great, okay, we'll hire him. So that's how it works. So if you have a job now, endeavor to make yourself uh, don't, don't kiss up, don't be a bootlick, but be useful to people, be helpful to people. And that goes a long, long, long way, a long way. There's IQ and EQ. IQ is, uh, you know, your, uh, your intellectual capacity. EQ is your emotional, I think it's emotional quotient or something. You can look it up. That's very important, very important. In fact, like in my mentoring group, one of the guys uh, in the group, he's actually a very good coder, he's got natural skill for code. He's having trouble finding work though because he's, he's, his ability to communicate is really sh strained, it's very strained. So I actually put together a course for him called Lizard Wizard, well for him, for the group, and he, he was one of the main reasons I said, okay, I'm gonna do it because I think people will need this. And it's about how your brain works, the two different operating systems of your brain, so you understand why you feel anxiety, why people like others or dislike others, why, uh, how to control your stress responses, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the foundation of, of uh, good soft skills. So I put that together. Anyway, there you go. That's the, uh, that's the story. Recession is com in coming. In summary, save cash. Uh, remember, it's only temporary. Level up your skills, but check, check out, do some research in terms of the demand in your area f so you, don't, you level up in the right skills. Um, level up your contacts, expand your sphere of contacts with people in industry. Um, and then join communities, uh, whether Twitter, or whether, whether it be Discord channels, whatnot. And, uh, and endeavor to make yourself 
useful to other people, useful to other people, and you'll be fine. Remember, recessions come and go. Expect about a year of downturn. Um, could be as much as you know, 15 months, 18 months. Who knows? You know, I think on average a year. But prepare yourself for the worst case scenario, and you'll be fine. All right. I hope this helps. Bye bye.